Hey, baby, I'm hung like a vault monster. Well, here we are with the final campaign add-on for Borderlands 2. I gotta say, I'm a little bit sad. We've had some good times together. Fortunately, Yearbox seems to have gone out with a bang. Unless we make a stand here and now, we're gonna die. Now. Roll for initiative! If you thought Borderlands 2 was silly, think again, because Gearbox's fourth and final add-on, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, makes the rest of the game look like a school field trip to the tire factory. Narrated entirely by Tiny Tina, the 13-year-old explosives expert with a mild case of don't give a f this DLC tackles more mature subjects than what its lead character might lead you to believe. On a deeper level, it deals with Tina's struggle to accept the loss of her friend Roland. As a means of dealing with his death, she constructs a fantasy world within a game of bunkers and badasses, which is totally not D&D because trademarks. Wait, why the hell are we playing this kid's game? Oh, you know, maybe because shut the hell up, Morty! Tina! The cool thing about this premise is that it's all in her mind, so Everybody Tina can create no and night. bend her surroundings at will. This paves the way for all kinds of weird stuff that would never actually exist on Pandora. Rainbows and ponies surrounded by just about every fantasy trope you can think of, with all the returning cast playing the role of NPCs. It's a genius idea that brings all of the characters together for one final hurrah, while somehow managing to humanize the most nut job one of them all. Even by Borderlands standards, it's wacky, but the humor goes beyond dumb fart jokes and extends into satire, providing social commentary on issues frequently discussed in the gaming community. What? I can't like geek stuff just because I take care of my body? In general, Borderlands DLC has a history of being sort of hit or miss. One of my biggest complaints has always been the lack of enemy variety, but this campaign aims to change that, offering more new enemy types than the previous three DLCs combined. Tree ants, dwarves, orcs, and skeleton midgets are just a few of the creepy and sometimes even cute creatures you'll encounter, and each has their own unique characteristics and behaviors. The boss fights are particularly well designed, providing some of the most satisfying moments of the entire game. DLC or not. There are of course some new features as well, all of which keep with the RPG fantasy theme. Pixies can dole out temporary buffs if you manage to catch one of them, and Iridium Shrines have been placed around, giving small bursts of ammo or other buffs when needed. My favorite addition by far are the new loot chests guarded by 20-sided dice. These offer up potentially rare and valuable items in exchange for Iridium. Along with a bevy of new magical weapons, there's also a decent amount of endgame content including new Seraph items and legendaries, and a raid boss made up of dragons. Like, flying ones. Oh, snap! It's curious how a campaign that strays so far from canon can wind up feeling so apropos. Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep is the only Borderlands 2 DLC that's kept me interested for longer than it took to complete the storyline, which in this case is well over eight hours. Twice that with all the side content. Its larger size is the reason I'm able to excuse some of its technical shortcomings. Wonky character animations were particularly common in my playthrough, and there were also a couple instances where a story NPC would glitch out, causing a stalemate that could only be fixed by restarting the game. Though irritating, these issues are relatively minor in comparison to the overall scope of the DLC. It boasts some of the best environments and music of any campaign in the series, and the level of detail sets an almost unfair precedent for future add-ons. It's clear a lot of love was put into this campaign, and it's reflected in its graceful ability to balance mature subjects with whimsical, puerile humor. The result is a fresh and fitting ending to one of the best games of 2012. If you can only buy one add-on for Borderlands 2, for the love of God, make it this one. I give it a 4 out of 5. So that is my review of the fourth and final campaign DLC for Borderlands 2, which brings a very happy chapter of my life to a very gradual and painful close. This is out today for 10 bucks on pretty much all of the platforms Borderlands 2 is on. If you played it, let me know what you think. And if you haven't, let me know if you're excited to play it. Thanks for watching.